What is going on guys? Spencer here with MPC and today I want to introduce the new MPC Motorsport Brake Line Tuck Kits. Now these kits specifically are for the EG Civic and the DC Integra, however we will be making these uh, for a variety of chassis. So uh, the, the nice thing about these kits is we actually manufacture these in-house. Uh, we are a DOT certified manufacturer. In addition, we make some of the components in these kits uh, ourselves as well as partnering with some of the leading brake manufacturers to bring you the best quality kit possible. All of our kits are gonna be a bolt-on installation. Uh, this kit in particular keeps all the lines in the bay. So with this kit, you will have to cut and reflare your factory hard lines. However, um, it's a pretty simple process and we're gonna walk you through that. So let's go ahead and open this box and show you guys what's inside. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you guys is the actual brake lines. Now these are stainless steel braided. They have a charcoal protective covering. We also offer these in black as well as custom colors by request. Each line has a tag showing you where they're gonna mount. Next up is our prop valve. Now this is a big deal for you guys doing a rear disc conversion or an ABS delete. Uh, you guys probably know how expensive OEM prop valves are. Uh, this is a brand new prop valve. You don't have to worry about rebuilding it and it is gonna be ready to go with your very own mounting bracket. It's gonna keep things mounted up securely, out of the way. And last but not least, we have our fittings. And we actually manufacture some of these fittings in house just to make the install a little bit cleaner for you guys. And we're gonna jump right in to the install. And the first part of that install, we're gonna go ahead and knock out those rear brake lines. That's the part I think a lot of people dread. So we're gonna to talk to you guys about different flare tools and how to use them. An important thing to know uh, before you're buying a flare tool is they must be a 37 degree single flare. Uh, don't buy a 45, don't buy a double flare. Uh, it must be a 37 degree single flare tool. Uh, my personal favorite here at the shop is this rigid 377. Uh, you used to be able to buy them at Home Depot, but uh, they are all on back order and have been for weeks. Uh, so the next best thing is this Parker style tool. Still does a really nice job. This one in particular is made by Vibrant. Uh, but there are several manufacturers who make this style tool. It does a good job. Uh, and last and certainly my least favorite is uh, the parts store set. Now they work if you're in a pinch or if you're on a budget, uh, but I would strongly recommend get yourself a good flare tool. You will thank yourself later. So uh, before you can do any flares, you've got to cut your brake line. So I've got a small uh, low profile tubing cutter here. I'll, I'll link one down below if you guys need one. Um, but you're basically going to put your tubing in between the rollers, snug this thing down, and start to rotate around the tubing. And it's hard to hold this because it is perfectly straight and very slippery. But uh, you'll keep tightening, keep rotating until you get a nice cut. The good thing about these cutters they don't leave much of an outside burr, but you will need a drill bit or something similar to come in here and knock that inside burr off. So once it's deburred, uh, if this was on the car, now would be the time to install our tube nut, wherever it's ran off to. Put that on first, then you'll install your tube sleeve. Do not forget to do this on the car or you will be getting your practice in on your car. Um, and then you wanna open up the tool. This is a 3 16th line, again, um, trying to give you guys a good a look of what we're doing. We're putting the line just about flush with the end of the tool. And then we're gonna slide this up. It's got a little arrow to help you line it up once you start to tighten it down. And then it kinda finds its place, it's tapered my clamp, so. And you wanna snug it down pretty good. You don't want this to move on you while you're flaring. Um, and if this was on the vehicle, we would put a drop of brake fluid on there at this point, but uh, we're just gonna knock this out for you real quick. So you're gonna tighten this down until the clutch releases, and you can see it's starting to spread up near the handle. Uh, so you'll just keep going, keep going. Oh, there it goes. All right, we're gonna back it off about a turn. Come back down again. 
Make sure it's nice and even. And there we have it. Back it out. Looks pretty good. And we'll loosen our clamp. Slide this guy back. Open this up. We should have a beautiful 37 degree flare. Now this is a single flare because you have a tube sleeve and behind that you have a tube nut that is going to support that flare. All right, so now on to the Parker style tool. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure your dies are rotated to where they both say three sixteenths and they do. You're gonna take your piece of brake line and you're gonna prep it and cut it the exact same way. Use a drill to deburr the inside. And if you have any trouble getting your uh, tube nut, well, you won't have any trouble with your tube nut, but with your tube sleeve, if you have any trouble getting it on and off, just use a file, lightly hit the end of your brake line there just to make sure all the burrs are gone. We don't want anything to get in the way of that flare. So now we're gonna insert it in from the back. And we're gonna make sure it is flush with the top of the dies. And we're gonna snug our handle down. Okay, once that's snug, now would be the time to add brake fluid, just a drop uh, to lubricate the top of this die. Uh, just for the sake of demonstration, we're gonna run this down. Double check you're tight here, and we are. Okay. Once you get it bottomed out, you'll feel it. You can bring it back up. Loosen your handle. This will open up. And there's your flare. Now on to my least favorite, the parts store kit. We're gonna prep it. Uh, with this tool, it's even more important than ever to make sure it's cut nice and square and that there's no burrs on any of your tubing. It's out of the way. Just loosen this up to where you can fit your line in. And you wanna be flush with the top of the tool. Now don't try and, and just snug these up by hand. I would strongly recommend put a screwdriver in here, really snug them up. Okay. Should have slid this on first, but pack this tool out. You're gonna position it over your fitting, over your brake line. Now, when I'm turning this to the right to tighten it, it's gonna automatically wanna turn the sides of this clamp to the right. So I just go ahead and get that out of the way. Just let it do that. You don't want it to turn while you're in the middle of your flare. And just like with those kits, bring them on down. Get it to where it's snug, don't, I mean, don't crank it too much, but you'll feel it bottom out. And there you have a 37 degree flare. Now it may take some practice with your particular tool. 
Some tools you'll need to be just a touch above flush. Other tools work better if you're perfectly flush. Uh, but take, take your time, get familiar with whatever tool you're gonna be using uh, because you don't wanna practice on the car. Practice on your workbench. All right, well, now that that's done, let's go over to the car and show you guys where we're gonna cut the factory lines and we'll, we'll flare the vehicle. So these are the rear brake lines. And the first thing we've gotta do is we've gotta strip some of this insulation back. Um, we're actually gonna cut the brake lines right here beyond this bend because we've gotta have some straight section uh, in order to do our flares. Uh, so we're, we're gonna go ahead and remove the insulation uh, from about here, as far back as we can comfortably get. Uh, of course, this would be easier to do if the subframe weren't here, but uh, it's installed, so we're just gonna work around that. Uh, so we're gonna go around each one with the razor blade at the bottom, and then we will uh, make another circle here towards the top where we're gonna cut. We'll make a slit on each one, and then we'll use a little bit of heat to help that glue to uh, release. a little torch here. Uh, make sure if you have any open gas lines or brake fluid or anything else that's flammable uh, that you take care of that first. Make sure it's capped off or cleaned up. All right, we're gonna go on up just a bit so we have more room to get our tubing cutter in here whenever we cut these off. So we're gonna do the same process. Uh, we're just gonna slit it, we're gonna heat it up, and it should peel back. So now that we've got the insulation stripped, uh, we can actually go through and, and cut these. Now, um, more than likely, these will be ha these will be cut more than once. Um, but initially, we're going to cut as much as we can on each section and try and get a nice straight area. Then we're going to start bending them upwards to install our F fitting. So, like we mentioned earlier, you want to tighten up the tubing between the rollers and uh, this is going to bring the cutting wheel up and you will just rotate it around the tube, the brake line. And each time, or sometimes sooner than each full rotation, you'll be able to snug that wheel up just a little bit more. It's gonna bring the blade closer and closer to center, which is gonna cut the brake line off. You shouldn't have to use more than your fingers to tighten these. If you use pliers or something like that, uh, you can deform the brake line, which is not what you want to do. So there's one, and there's two. Now if you lose any brake fluid, you'll want to make sure and wipe that up. Uh, I'm going to go grab a towel because we don't want to peel the paint on our subframe. Alright, so we have two lines, and they're going to be installed into our F-fitting. 
And as you can see, we've already got one line longer than the other. So we want to kind of make sure that the gap is where we want it before we start to bend these upwards. But the ideal placement of our fitting uh, is going to be right in this area down low. You can go lower if you'd like. Uh, just keep in mind, the further down that you go, the harder it's going to be to work on these lines with the subframe in the car. So we found about this area is optimal. Um, but <clears throat> another thing you want to consider, you want to make your bends as far down as you can. That way you have enough room to slide on your tube nut, your tube sleeve, and still be able to get your tool in here to do the flare. So we want to try and bend this first line up. And our second line. Now once we install our F fitting, um, it'll hold everything in place, um, but you, you do want to make sure that you get it pretty close to where it's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our F fitting and we can check our work. All right, so here's our F fitting. And if we drop it down about like so, we will be right there. And it's not taking much pressure at all uh, to move these brake lines into position. There's not any clips up on this front portion, so uh, the actual threads on this fitting will be holding everything together nice and neat. All right. It is now time to deburr the brake lines and do our flares. All right, so like we talked about earlier, um, the, the tubing cutters do a really good job of leaving a nice finish on the outside, but we've still got to come in here and deburr the inside. So take a drill bit, knock off any burrs. There really wasn't that much on the inside either, but it's a good, good habit to get into. So once those are clean, just like we practiced, we will put our tube nut on, tube sleeve. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the other side too, just to get that over with. There's no chance of forgetting it that way. And now we will start our flares. basically at the very top of the tool. We'll slide this down to where our arrow lines up with that groove to get us started. And once it starts to snug down, it will center itself in the taper. Okay, that is on there snug. And now we can bring the handle down, start our flare. is fully released. Let's back it out. Loosen up our clamp. And there we have our nice 37 degree flare, which is ready for our F fitting. So now that one's done, it looks good. 
go ahead and knock this one out. There we have it. R2, 37 degree flares. So at this point, we can install our F fitting. And this is a process where you may want to go ahead and start the threads on both before you tighten anything up completely. Then we will come back and snug these nuts up. And this is a good time if you want to get this thing closer to the firewall. Try and bend your lines back just a little bit more. But I think right where it's sitting is uh, it's gonna be pretty good for us. So we'll tighten these nuts up and move on to the next step. Now be careful when snugging these down, they do not need to be super tight. I think that is probably the single biggest mistake we see is people over tightening these. They just need a good snug. That's it. All right. On to the next. Okay. So now it's time to install the prop valve. And you'll notice uh, these two adapter fittings for you guys and your kits, they're gonna come pre-installed. Uh, so you don't have to worry with that. Uh, these are the only fittings in this particular kit that are pipe fittings that use sealant. Everything else seals on the flares. So do not try and tape any of the fittings that you install. Now installing this valve is very simple. Um, we've actually already got it mounted to the bracket, which is gonna vary depending on which master cylinder you're running. Uh, and you may notice we've got our booster flipped to run the vacuum hose off the bottom. That is not a requirement. It's just something that we like to do on our vehicles. It makes for a little bit cleaner look. So you'll remove the nuts, holding your master cylinder to your booster. and simply reinstall the nuts and tighten everything up. And that's that. Next up, we're gonna install the brake line that goes from the rear port on the master cylinder to the inlet side of the prop valve. And you'll know which side is inlet because it says in on that side. It's uh, on this kit closest to the clutch master cylinder. Now, I usually recommend to install the 90 degree fitting onto the prop valve first, and you can snug it up pretty good with your fingers. You'll still be able to move it around just a little bit by hand. Then you can install your banjo fitting, banjo bolt. Now make sure that you have your crush washers on both sides. All right. Once that's installed, you can go ahead and snug these up. Again, neither one requires a lot of torque. Just a little bit. Do your best not to over tighten these. Okay, that looks good. So now we're gonna install the line that goes from the outlet on the prop valve to our F fitting and onto the rear brake lines. This one drops down, goes behind the boot. And installs just like so onto our F fitting. straight up 
to the prop valve. Once both ends are installed, snug these up. And you're good to go. So now it's time to install the front lines into the front wheel wells. Now I've got our lines here. The longer one is gonna go to the right hand side and the shorter one is gonna go to the left hand side. I've also got our bulkhead, or our double banjo adapter here, as well as our banjo bolt sitting on the shock tower to where we can easily access it. And the first thing we wanna do is take the short line and we wanna just go ahead and push it through this grommet. Just feed that through and let it hang out here for now. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna take the short female 90 degree fitting. We wanna feed it behind the steering shaft here, behind the lines that we flared and cut. We're gonna set this end through the grommet on this side. Let that sit in here for now. This end, we're going to thread into our banjo adapter here. Don't have to tighten it, but we do wanna make sure it's in there and it started good. Okay. Now the tricky part getting our banjo bolt installed with crush washers on each side. All right, you wanna snug that? And the line that we pushed through the grommet will come up and thread into the other side. So you've got the short line coming onto the front, the long line on the rear, now we will secure the connections behind the wheel well to the caliper lines, and we'll come back here and snug these up last. So here we are at the wheel well side of the kit. You can see we've got it poking through here. Uh, our kit is gonna stop here. Uh, it does not include the caliper lines. You can reuse your factory ones, or you can buy the upgraded kit from us. Um, but you'll set these in. Thread this nut down, just like factory. You grab your wrench and snug it up. Now, if you have any trouble at all getting these to line up, I would recommend removing this clip to where you've got some more room here. Get everything started, tighten as much as you can by hand, and then pop your clip back in, get your wrench, snug it up solid. Do that on both sides. So once you get the wheel well connections tight, you can come back over here and snug this up. So the first thing you'll do, make sure this is good and straight and it looks the way you want it to look. Go ahead and snug this down. It's a 10 millimeter wrench. And finally, you're just gonna secure these connections here. All right. All right, guys, and there you have it. Uh, it's uh, once your fittings are connected, you just want to make sure they're snug, fill your system with fluid. You want to bleed your brakes just like normal and check for leaks. Once you get the car out on the road and driving, then it's time to set that rear bias valve and get those brakes in the rear uh, set just the way you want them. Now, uh, we wanted to take the time to make this video just to show you guys that it's really not that difficult uh, to install this kit. 
and it can be a little intimidating if you've never cut or flared brake lines before, but I promise you guys can do it. If you guys have any questions at all about this kit or any of our products in general, uh, you can drop a comment down below. The quickest way to get a hold of us is through our Instagram at NPC Motorsport or send us an email, support at NPC Motorsport.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.